Just beneath the surface of the ocean resides an organism so stunning it surpasses human comprehension. Yes, we're talking about the majestic coral. No, not that coral. This coral. 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 Okay, we are back for another deep dive into a major Walking Dead character. This week we're covering Carl Grimes, the fan favorite child of the apocalypse who died early in one medium just to be the last man standing in another. So pop the top of another can of chocolate pudding, grow your hair out, and please stay in the house. I'm Woody Tondorf, and this is I See Dead People. So who is Carl? Great prompt. He's the precocious son of Rick and Lori Grimes who evolves from a scared little kid to unmitigated badass in the span of just a few short years that we please ask you not to do the math on. Carl Grimes made his Walking Dead comic debut in issue one as a photograph and in issue two as a full ass person. It's called character development. Once the apocalypse hits, Carl, Lori, and Shane leave a comatose Rick and join up with a survival group just outside Atlanta. Rick miraculously reunites with them, causing Carl to be overjoyed and Shane to be upset. Rick teaches Carl how to shoot a gun, which comes in handy during a night attack by walkers and a Rick attack by Shane. Carl shoots and kills Shane, marking his first human kill, but absolutely, positively, not his last. During their travels, Carl gets accidentally shot by a hunter named Otis, forcing Rick to rush him to a nearby farm to get patched up by its owner, Herschel. Speaking of medication, scientists have discovered several parts of coral reefs can be harvested into potential treatments for cancer, arthritis, and heart disease. Also looks fetching on a desk. Carl mostly recovers from his injury, but has to leave the farm once Rick and Herschel get in a fight. They hole up in a nearby prison where Carl spends most of his time worrying about Rick, who one day returns with one less hand, validation. Carl's elated when his sister Judith is born, but their time together gets cut short when the governor takes the prison and shotgun blasts Lori and Judith in the process. This turns out to be almost as devastating as climate change is to coral reefs. Both are sad. On the road, Carl and Rick stay in a house and later reunite with Michonne and the gang. Enter Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene, who are on their way to DC from Texas, a state that's twice as big as the Great Barrier Reef. On the way, Rick, Abraham, and Eugene get jumped by a bunch of freaks who want to do horrendous stuff to Carl. Rick bites out the dude's juggler like an animal while Abraham finishes him off. Speaking of, Coral's actually a living animal and not a plant, hence the thing of organism at the beginning. Did you even pay attention? What are we doing this for? After that traumatizing ordeal, they reunite with Morgan, survive a massive horde, and Carl admits to killing Ben, the Lizzie of the comics who had just killed his brother Billy. No one, I mean no one, misses Ben. They eventually land in Alexandria, where Carl has a hard time acclimating. Bad goes to worse when a herd invades, resulting in the loss of Jesse, Ron, and Carl's eye. Seriously, you can see Carl's eye injury from space, just like the Great Barrier Reef. How many more of these are we gonna do, Jesus? Carl miraculously survives, again, and is able to return to normal, just in time for the saviors to show up. After witnessing Negan's brutal murder of Glenn in the lineup, Carl decides to take matters into his own tiny hands by infiltrating the sanctuary and killing a bunch of saviors. Negan is amused, Natch, and takes Carl under his wing, showing him how his fucked up world operates and also makes him sing. It's weird. Negan releases him back home just in time for all out war. The war claims a ton of lives and bullets, but in the end Negan loses, Rick slits his throat, and he's imprisoned. Time jump! Ahead a couple years and Rick and Andrea are married. Nice, and Carl is now 16. Please do not do the math. Carl moves to Hilltop to apprentice as Earl's blacksmith and flirt with Sophia, who he defends after two asshole kids attack her. Because he nearly killed them, Carl's sent to jail, where he meets Lydia. The two get in a relationship and Lydia licks his empty eye socket because the Whispers have a strict borders, not boundaries policy. Carl's Love Island summer all comes crashing down when Lydia's mom Alpha shows up and totally kills their buzz, just like the fact that 60% of the world's coral reefs are threatened by human activity, which again, is sad and real, but oh my god, the coral reef references, fuck man. Carl trails the skins and immediately gets tied up in the Whisperer camp. Rick rescues them and on the way home, they discover the decapitated heads of their friends on spikes marking Alpha's border. A little later, Negan beheads Alpha and now it's time for All Out Whisperer War. Beta guts Gabriel and marches his horde to Hilltop, where Lydia happily slaughters her own people and Carl nearly dies in a fire. But miraculously, they win, and Aaron and Jesus kill Beta for good. But of course, this is The Walking Dead, and nothing's too good, so we end up losing Andrea to a walker bite. This is why we can't have nice Sorry, tea swivels, we still haven't gotten to the show. Enter the Commonwealth arc, which Carl's story takes a backseat to. I mean, we do get some fun love triangle awkwardness between him, Lydia, and Sophia, and there's this really fun reference that Rick makes about how Carl used to just pound breadsticks at this little Italian place, but that's basically it until Rick returns with the Commonwealth's leader, Pamela. Tired of his Riverdale B story, Carl joins everyone in Commonwealth where he finally feels like he fits in. What's dad up to? <laughs> Fuck. Carl discovers Rick dead and shot several times in the chest, forcing him to put his own father down. They soon discover Pamela's jealous shitbag son Sebastian is to blame. He gets locked up for the rest of his life as Carl leads a procession back to Alexandria. Carl collapses off the wagon from grief, but Michonne reminds him that Rick made the world a safer place. 
We jump forward 20 goddamn years to see Rick has a statue, and Carl has glowed the fuck up into the brawny man. He lives as a courier in a farmhouse just outside the Commonwealth with his wife Sophia and his daughter, Andrea. Aw, he has his own coral colony. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. Everyone, even Negan, seems to get a happy ending as we close the comic series with Carl reading the story of The Walking Dead to his daughter. Cue the Princess Bride line. As you wish. God, can you imagine if we actually got that ending in the show? We never will. Tough shit. Life is hard. Let's continue. Chandler Riggs first appears as Carl Grimes in the pilot episode, Days Gone By. Like the comics, he, Lori, and Shane join a survival group just outside of Atlanta after abandoning Rick in a hospital. Rick miraculously reunites with them, Carl gets his first and only haircut, and they all barely make it out of the camp alive. <laughs> they take shelter in the CDC until Dr. Edwin Jenner decides to blow it up. After getting trapped on a highway by walkers, Carl and the gang retreats into the woods, where Sophia gets lost, and Carl gets shot through the chest by a hunter named Otis. Rick rushes Carl to the nearest idyllic looking farm to get patched up by Herschel, who lets them stay. Well, we should shoot Carl more often. Carl wakes up from his coma, but Sophia is not so lucky. Soon after, Shane goes crazy, Rick kills him, and Carl puts him down in epic fashion. Making matters worse, the farm goes to shit, and they're forced to flee. The gang holds up into prison, which Carl adapts to faster than prison Mike. I am in his gang is Carl finds medicine to help Herschel's leg amputation, but is helpless when his mother dies giving birth to Judith. Carl puts her down, Jesus, and then sobs with Rick, leading to the most glorious Walking Dead meme ever. No. <laughs> Soon after, Carl discovers Michonne, who stays, and Tyrese's group, who bounce to join Woodbury. After the governor attacks, Carl, Rick, and Michonne head out to find more weapons in Carl's hometown. It's there they run into Morgan, who Carl shoots like a badass. Ooh, right in the torso, don't rub it. After a bunch of shenanigans, Morgan goes his separate way, and Michonne gifts Carl a family picture of him, Rick, and Lori. That's nice. When the governor attacks again, Carl hides in the woods, where he spots a Woodbury soldier named Jody, who surrenders. Carl murders him anyway, and Rick argues with him about it later. This causes a rift in their relationship that gets solved during a six-month time jump. With the prison community thriving, Carl becomes even more skilled with guns and helps Rick take down dozens of walkers at the fence. But of course, the governor attacks one final time, Time, claiming the lives of Herschel, his people, and himself. It is time to bounce. Rick and Carl hole up in a house where Rick loses consciousness and Carl does a decent job wrapping his feelings to him. Carl then finds chocolate pudding during a supply mission and fights off walkers until Michonne shows up. On the road, the three of them get jumped by a group of rapist men and Daryl, who claims he was just there for the group aunts. When the strangers try to assault Carl, Rick goes from zero to Last of Us 2 night forest scene and bites out Joe's jugular, disembowels this guy, and kills the others with the help of Daryl and Michonne. Afterwards, they arrive at Terminus and immediately get captured. They're fucking with the wrong people. Carol helps break them out, and Rick and Carl finally reunite with Judith, who's definitely seen some shit. Thanks to Aaron, they eventually make it to Alexandria, where Carl and the others have a difficult time adjusting to quote-unquote normal life. He quickly gets over it, after definitely getting a boner in this hollow tree with Enid. They return to town just in time to watch Rick go full Hugh Jackman prisoner on Pete. <laughs> After things settle down and they survive the wolf attack, Enid goes missing. Carl and Ron get in a fight about it, leading to this very non-badass scuffle. Rick and the gang throw on the gut ponchos and nearly make it out alive until fucking Sam freaks out and busts their cover. He and Jesse get eaten, leading Ron to shoot at Carl. Michonne stabs and kills him, but this shot hits Carl in his eye. Rick rushes him to Denise, who's able to keep him alive. Good job, Denise. Months later, we meet the Hilltop and learn about their beef against the saviors. After killing a bunch of them in their sleep, Rick decides to go to Hilltop and get medical help for Maggie. Carl locks Enid in a closet, and when she asks him what happens, if he doesn't come back, Carl says, I just survive somehow. Yeah, good job, smooth guy Carl. Hit him with a line. On the road, Carl and the gang get kidnapped by the saviors, put on their knees, and forced to watch Negan brutally murder Abe and Glenn. Carl almost gets his arm hacked off by Rick, but Negan stops him because the episode is nearing two hours of torture. So what does Carl do next? Goes rollerblading with Enid and gets his first kiss. My man! Carl then sneaks into a savior truck with Jesus, tricks him into hopping out, and infiltrates the sanctuary, killing several saviors. Did you pick that gun because it looks cool? Like the comics, Negan takes him under his wing and makes him sing and watch people get ironed. I've had worse internships. I'm just saying. Negan returns Carl to Alexandria and starts making spaghetti, basically just playing house until Rick returns. And once he leaves, Carl and the gang reunite with Daryl at Hilltop and then head to Kingdom to recruit King Ezekiel. When that doesn't work, they head to Oceanside, where Carl naturally holds a bunch of women and girls at gunpoint, asking them to fight for them. Thankfully, the communities reunite in an epic battle in Alexandria, where Carl almost gets Lucille'd, this guy gets mauled by Shiva, oof, and they actually drive Negan out of town for once. Time for all out war. Carl recreates Rick's gas station scene from the pilot and meets a stranger named Sadiq. Run like the wind, Carl! He doesn't. Carl ends up getting bitten on the way to Alexandria, son of a bitch! Carl spends the last days of his life writing very eloquent letters to loved ones and taking selfies with Judith. Negan arrives at 
Alexandria that night and Carl quickly formulates an escape plan through the sewers. He offers himself up to Negan in exchange for everyone's safety, but is interrupted by Daryl's distraction plan. Negan and his people attack as Carl reveals his bite mark to Rick and the gang in the sewers. He gives them his letters, says an emotional goodbye to Judith and the rest, and eventually dies in the town church by shooting himself in the head. And so ends Carl Grimes. I do not have any coral facts. Carl survived through 193 issues and 108 episodes. In the show, he was briefly a poster child for other Robert Kirkman comics like Science Dog and Invincible. See, he's reading it right here in the woods. He's inspired numerous cosplays, action figures, merchandise, and so much more. And even though he died in the show, you can still catch Chandler Riggs as Carl Grimes in his GTA Online Twitch streams, as God intended. And that wraps up this week's episode of I See Dead People. What are your favorite Carl moments? Would you let someone lick your eye socket as a form of second base? Like and subscribe to Skybound and check out our Walking Dead podcast, Talk Dead to Me, where we interview Walking Dead actors like Chandler Riggs himself. I'm Woody Tondorf. Coral gets their color from algae. Oh, God damn it. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>